I'm Jim Collison, and live from Omaha, Nebraska, this is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 2, recorded on September 29th, 2016. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths Finder themes, one theme at a time, and today's theme is significance. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the webcast, we do have a live chat room. It's available for you right below the main video window. Love to have you log in. Login's bottom left. Click log in, create the guest account, put your name in where it says guest, and then hit submit. If you're in as a guest right now, go ahead and just log out and do that same procedure. Put your name in there. So it's always nicer to say your name than it is to say the guest name. So do that. That's the best way to get questions in. And we do uh, encourage your questions live while we're doing this as well. You can also pop out that chat window as well. So if you can get it out of the out of the video, it's a great way to have both windows open at the same time. If you're listening to the recorded version or any custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strengths Center, just Gallup Strengths Center for all your coaching resources and strengths finder training needs. You can also catch the video. And now both streaming and downloadable audio, Real, really no excuse to not listen to our stuff. I mentioned in the pre-show, I had a coach uh, find me on a plane this week. Uh, she was, uh, Lori was listening to uh, a called the coach while she was traveling. A great way to recapture that time, uh, some pre professional development for you. Make sure you're getting that to your phone and then plug in your earbuds and listen as you're traveling. A great way to do it. All the options to, and uh, click on the subscribe tab on our coach's blog. Go to coaching.gallup.com. Micah Librant is our host today. Micah is uh, as my absolute favorite learning and development consultant here at Gallup. Micah, don't tell anybody I say that, though, all right? I don't don't want worry. This one. is all private. Nobody will ever see this, Jim. I don't want the other ones to be jealous that I'm saying that. But welcome, welcome to Theme Thursday. Thanks, Jim. Great to be here. Great to be back. Thanks for everyone for, for coming back who are watching us live here. We took a little bit of a break there in our scheduling, and it's it's really great to get back into the rhythm, back into this habit of you know spending some intentional time falling in love with these themes. Yeah, and maybe a little a little bit of you know when I when I say that you're my favorite learning and development consultant, that may be a little significance moment, right? As we kind of dig into this, giving some praise and recognition and some, and really that, and, and I think I, I am super excited about this. We dug uh, this week or last night, I dug into season one when we went, this was our, by the way, season one, our very first, I think, webcast together. I think it, it was, was season one significance. And, uh, and it was fun. It was tons of fun. John Leesfeld was on there. It was a significant webcast for us in the sense mm -hmm. that it had been the first one uh, after Kurt had passed away. And so it was just, it was fun to go back. I was a little hesitant, to be honest with you. I was a little hesitant to go back and watch it, just to churn, return up those emotions. But it was fun and well worth it. So if you haven't gone back and watched season one, after we're done here, go back. And Micah, you have a big challenge today because as I was listening, we covered a lot of the info. I gave you this, this sheet and you covered it. So we got some work to do today. Let's dig into significance. Yeah. So uh, honestly, I think that our format in season two is purposefully different than season one. I would encourage you to go back after this and listen to season one on significance if you haven't, because you'll get to hear from somebody who leads with significance what it sounds like. What you're going to hear today is, is from me. So it's a little bit more of an academic approach to the theme rather than a, uh, I don't know, than living in it. Um, so I, I know it. I love it. I study it. I'm married to someone with it. Um, but, but it's really great to go listen to what John had to say in season one. You'll, you'll wonder if you're looking at me. I watched it this morning because, you know, usually I spend my mornings watching season one to get to really get it in my head. And I was a little bit down because I thought, well, what am I going to do? Go watch myself. And then Jim, you said, hey, Micah, go check it out. And I did. And the other thing you'll notice is I was eight months pregnant at the time. <laughs> so it's a little bit like, is that really Micah? Is that going on? Well, cool connectedness moment. This isn't significance, but um, my my toddler was home with me this morning because he was sick last night. And so the two of us were watching who you know the, the significance uh, season one. And I just thought, you know, the work that we put into that's really having an impact. So there's a segue. Significance is about what you do and an awareness of the impact that it has. Yeah. John or uh, Barbara says in chat, John's theme Thursday woke me up to significance in my strengths. It's number it's number 10 for her. And actually, uh, Jim sent us an email, very significant email this week that I, we got yesterday, a very long, you could kind of tell written by someone who had significance. And he that had been a meaningful moment for him too, going yeah. through that. And so we'll weave some of that in. But Jim, thanks for your feedback. We do, we do encourage that. We love it when you send us notes 
I've encouraged Theme Thursday gets way more email than any other webcast we do here. And we always appreciate that. I share those all with Micah. So keep that feedback coming in. Micah, as we yeah. think about significance, let's dig into the definition. Let's do it. So we're going to start, if you haven't downloaded the companion guide, press pause and go download it and then come back. So we're going to follow through this. Just like we always do with Theme Thursday Season 2, we're going to start with a short definition. That's the same definition that you'll see on your full 34 theme sequence report. It's also the definition you're going to see on the Clifton Strengths Finder quick reference card. It's just a few sentences. And with significance especially, sometimes these few sentences throw people off. Um, and I think that what you're going to learn today and love today about significance significance is it's not a common theme. It is, um, it's in the bottom five uh, of the most common, the, of, of how frequently it shows up in somebody's top five in the world. And there was a, a really great blog written and posted to our, our Facebook page this week um, it, from, from leadingthroughstrengths.com. There's a little plug for you. Uh, it was somebody describing significance and they described it as being sort of a shameful strength or one that when they read the short definition, they were ashamed of it. And I tried to reframe that. Um, I really think that um, our, our world sort of gets framed and shaped by what is commonly awesome. And when, when significance is uncommon, you know, rather than being ashamed of it, let's start to get curious about it and, and look at it as something that is, rather than shameful, probably something unique, something uncommonly great. Uh, I absolutely love this theme, and I hope by the end of our, our time together, you will as well. That being said, let's jump into this short definition here. People exceptionally talented in the significance theme want to be very important in the eyes of, in others' eyes. They are independent and want to be recognized. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. I think sometimes it's easy to see that and read it as, you know, I, that as it's all about me, read, read a lot of ego into it. And there is some ego in significance, but there's also a boldness, a courage, an awareness of how you're being seen. Significance really is, a, I think it's a comfort in the spotlight and and in, as we were, as we were, in fact, developing Clifton Strengths Finder, at one point, significance was called desire. It's this. It's it's being drawn toward uh, something that has a positive effect on other people. Yeah, and I think that idea of being drawn to the light is a good one. And that, yeah. uh, in a leadership role, it can be very, very powerful to be to be drawn in. And and if you go back and listen to season one. John talks about pulling others in with him, which is when we, dig, when we dig into raw versus mature, we'll expand on a little bit more. But every theme has a power and edge. Let's talk about that. The power and edge. The genius of people with strong significance begins and ends with the difference that they are determined to make. They want to make the world a better place because they are in it. Um, I was, I was looking for, as I always do, and I'll close with a great quote um, at the end of our time together today, but I was looking for, you know, how do I, how do I encompass this in, in a quote or in, in a phrase? And I think it all comes down to doing things on purpose. There's a great quote, um, and I don't know who it's from. This is really just coming to my mind right now, but it's a great quote that I've seen, um, which is begin every day as if it's on purpose. There's a real purposefulness, a real um, desire to leave a legacy, a real awareness that what you do is connected to who you are with significance. And I think that's what makes it powerful and beautiful and, and really pretty fun. Yeah, I think like Maximizer, right? It has that ability to sort too for, for important, right? For it's uh, in, Jim had said in his in his email to me yesterday, he didn't like karaoke because it seemed silly and irrelevant, right? It was kind of like, and and I think I just made up that word irrelevant, John or Jim, but it was it's one of those things like I I do things because they are important, and I don't spend or waste the time on just goofing off. And I, I man, it's a great sorting when we think about why we do stuff. Uh, it's a sort, and I think I heard you in season one say something about it can sort, right? It is absolutely a sorting theme. Yeah. Similar to, so Maximizer will sort to what's the best version of the work that you're doing. Um, or what's the strongest uh, foot forward. What it's similar in that way, significance is to Maximizer. Um, what, what significance is sorting to, it's got more of a radar for people's reaction. Uh, significance is going to sort to what's going to get the best reaction from people. What's going to get recognized by others. Uh, oftentimes I think people get tripped up by that piece around wanting recognition. Um, that is something, it's a symptom, I think, of significance, but it's not the whole case. Um, significance is di desire to be recognized, I think is there because it, 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 people with high significance can use that as evidence that they are or are not making a powerful lasting impact. 
Yeah, we've and I've gotten, a, I mean, I'll be honest, I've gotten a ton of recognition in the last couple of weeks, both from Gallup and from coaches just around Theme Thursday and such. And, and as I was meeting with Jane uh, just yesterday, I said to her, and I've said to everybody, this is that recognition is a symbol. It's a it's a sign of impact. Like, what am I actually doing and is it working right? John says in season one, that's how he knows he's doing the right thing when he gets yeah. that feedback. And he takes that feedback and does something with it, right? It's important. It's the fuel, I think he kept saying a bunch of times, you know, it's the fuel that drives me. And so it's not a, it's not a selfish, I have to have this, you've got to give it to me, I'm going to consume it. I think it's this, I need that fuel to burn so I can have an impact on others. And when, when we turn that up. You know, go ahead, Jim. No, no, go ahead. That fuel, when you turn it into something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think about significance as being a comfort in the spotlight, but not a performer who could perform exactly the same to an empty house. You know, it's that it's the person who is very um, drawn to being in, in the middle of the stage and interacting with the audience the entire time. It's not just mastering your task, but it's truly interacting and entertaining the people with you. So there's a comfort with feedback in, you know, in an everyday business situation that looks like somebody who's finding ways to reach out to your, your clients, your partners, your customers, and craving that approval, craving that uh, the goal is approval the goal is appreciation but through that craving it's that constant it's constantly getting closer to serving the need that other people are telling you that they have and when you start to listen to it like that you imagine how it is an influencing theme and how it could be something that you use to champion the cause of your people something that drives you to uh, taking action that other people wouldn't be brave enough to take it is um, it's motivated by appreciation and recognition but it is using that in order to make sure that the life you are living is is the most purposeful the most impactful the most meaningful for others yeah i like the way you say sometimes too it empowers someone to do uh, something that they wouldn't normally do, right? Or to push that forward a little bit farther because we know it's the right thing, or it's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna have a massive or it's gonna have maximum uh, input or uh, effect on that. And so it's just it's it's kind of cool. I think when you start putting it in those terms, you start to realize how important it is to have these people in your groups out front leading, right? Mm -hmm. I mean that's super important, and they can do. Amazing, powerful things for you. I want to dig in a little bit on raw versus mature. So as we think about that, and, and Micah, you know, Dean said on Called the Coach uh, last week, I think, balconies and basements, raw versus mature. We've had a lot of conversation in that in this season. And I think in season three, we're and as a company, I think we're moving away a little bit from that terminology because not everybody has a balcony and a basement. <laughs> you, you, I think you even mentioned that in season one. But um, for this season, to be consistent, we will finish up with that. So if you're listening to that, we're going to continue to finish up with these. But as a company, we'll be morphing on those terms. Anything you want to add to that? When we talk about raw and when I think through raw and mature so that I can present it to you, it I'm not thinking, what does this look like when it's off and what does it look like when it's on? I really don't like those terms there because our goal has to be, you know, as strengths coaches, we spend more time focusing on what's right with people than what's wrong with them. That's how we learn. That's not naive. That's, that's careful attention. Um, so when I think about raw and mature, I think about what, when I think about raw, I think about what clues do you have to talent that isn't yet as good as it could be. Some of those clues now could be, if they stay raw, they could be harmful, but they don't necessarily have to be. Raw is not bad. Raw is just not yet as, as refined as it could be. You know, I think about you know, the, the price of oil is, is a big deal in the world and oil by itself isn't, you know, that isn't the end goal. It's how do you refine it? How do you use it? How do you put it into your economy and turn it into other things? It's still valuable. So raw doesn't mean invaluable. It's just the beginning of that developmental process. And then when you think about the opposite side of that with mature, I come to that by thinking, wow, what does the strength look like when it's really on fire, when it's really, you know, empowering people and leading to better performance. Yeah. Let's, let's dig in on those. Yeah. So one of the pieces about significance, I love the word you use, uh, relevant, when you're talking about karaoke earlier, Jim, and I wish I would have put that in here. So we're going to immediately go to, to this piece around relevance. Um, significance sorts to it, sorts to what's, you know, what's going to, what are other people going to think is relevant? Um, that can lead to some impatience and some, and a lot of independence. That independence can be good, but in the raw form, I think it, it, it's looking at um, independent impact 
is the raw side of it. You know, if, if I'm, if I don't have a whole lot of tolerance for what I think is, is required of me right now, because it doesn't seem relevant, I'll just go it alone. That's not always the, the greatest thing to do. So if the raw side is independent impact, the mature side is influential impact. So being able to see what is relevant and share the spotlight toward that. So it's a little bit more of a patience, a little bit more of a sophistication around sorting to the most relevant pieces of an idea, the most relevant tasks within a project, and being able to help other people see that as well. And so I think it's, it's, you know, check yourself. Are you really, um, do you give up quickly and just go it alone? Um, or it, have you matured it to that place where you can say, hey, we can get there together. And here's why we need to be focusing uh, more of our attention toward the more relevant aspects. Yeah. And I think it's the perfect me versus we, right? It's so when it's, when it's in its raw form, that impact is, uh, you know, hey, I can do this alone. It's on me. I can, it's about what I'm doing. And in its mature state, it can really be, what are we doing together? What, how can I drag? I'm going to, let's do something super significant. And how can I drag as many people along with me to feel that important mission, goal, purpose, whatever, right? But to have that big idea, to have that big audacious goal that says, we're, we can, not only can we do this, we're going to do this, and I'm going to bring you along with me. Yeah. And so I, I love that when we think of that me versus we, I just think that's a great start. What else? Yeah. Um, I think that this is probably underscores what we just tried to say just in different words here, but I think raw significance is intolerant. I hate busy work. Uh, mature significance is insightful. I notice that we're being ineffective or inefficient and I'm going to sort to the work that has more potential. Yeah, kind uh, of asking that question, what if, right? And in, in yeah. sense that, hey, what, what if we did and, and took it beyond the scope of what the group is currently thinking? Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a creativity to it in that aspect. There's an, an innovation piece. Part of moving from raw significance to mature significance might be just paying attention to how engaged you are in what you're doing. Because we know that when, you know, when people are more engaged at work, they're more, uh, they take more courage to, to be innovative. They, they, you know, they fix more problems on their own. So, you know, part of this isn't just awareness about the talent, but it's also awareness about where that talent is playing. Yeah, no, for sure. What else? Raw significance needs any spotlight. <laughs> so it's, I don't care what the story is. I got a better one. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I can one up anybody. Um, I need that spotlight. I need it all the time. Mature significance uh, has comfort in the right spotlight. So it's about specializing. It's about, you know, understanding your, your strengths and putting words to those and be really sorting to the places where you are, are your best and allowing yourself to be really sharp versus uh, the best in every single situation. Uh, I think, yeah, the other one here I have is raw significance takes everything personally. Mature significance is focused on performance. So that means think about metrics, think about how you can define success and think about when you're looking for that sorts of feedback that it is performance based. So you're always going to own it yourself. That's part of significance is that you are inextricably linked from, between what you do and, and who you are. Uh, that's what's so powerful and so beautiful about it. Uh, but I think mature significance can can have a, a skin in the game, but still have the game be about performance. Yeah, I think some great insights. We we have a couple complementary themes that, that we have listed here. Let's dig in a little bit on that. By the way, uh, I looked ahead a little bit. Um, it's interesting this week, the number one for theme dynamics was maximizer. And someone had put in the, in the chat, you're like, why Maximizer? That, that's a great question. I think we're going to have some great clues to it when we get there. But what are those complementary themes, Mike, when we think about, uh, when we think about significance? Yeah, this is just some, some what if about who could be a good partner for you if you had significance. The first one that came to mind for me was connectedness. What I think connectedness brings to significance is a bit more tolerance for mystery. Uh, connectedness lives in this space of, I don't know where, I don't know why, I don't know how, but everything happens for a reason. And that sort of belief, I think, can help somebody with significance uh, sort to what effect is our work having on people. It really brings a more, I think, on purpose relationship aspect to significance. So it could be a really great way to say, we're, we're not just making the, the boldest, the biggest impact, but we're making the widest impact with the most ripples on, on the most people. Another one on a different uh, scale, an executing theme, um, I pulled out deliberative. What deliberative is going to um, do is, is stop and listen. 
whereas significance is probably more likely to stand up and uh, and say and take a stand and boldly move towards something. Um, I think that if you if you had a partner with deliberative, they bring careful, risk free execution of the most important work. Oh, very good. When we think about likely and unlikely pairs. And, uh, and, what, and and there's some interesting ones in this, and yeah. if we talked about in season one, but what do we, what do you see uh, uh, the, the likely pairing here with, uh, with significance? So the theme that's most likely to show up in somebody's top five with significance is achiever. Achiever is also the most common theme, but you know, no, <laughs> across the board, it shows up the most. So I, I think that there are some similarities here that make sense why it would show up with significance. Both achiever and significance have that out loud understanding of actionable work. It's not so much I'm sensing that this might be important. I think the what, what significance has, because significance is constantly drawn to real-time feedback, to actual you know, approval from real people, that there's sort of a, uh, you can list what you're doing with significance. You can talk about what the goal is. Even if it hasn't happened yet, it's not so abstract. And I think Achiever has uh, something similar there, where Achiever is pretty concrete. It's, uh, you know, I can tell you the 10 steps to get to where we're going and which ones we've checked off. It's that constant awareness of what you're doing. The difference between them is Achiever is about the engine to help you get things done. And Significance is going to sort between what the things are that you're doing. Significance is going to sort to what what's going to leave the most legacy, what's going to have the biggest splash. Um, I, I think they're both, uh, they, they display their their love for each other through value, through deeds, and through work, through, through doing. So there's certainly some similarities there. If you have them both, it's about, you know, it's about being, being drawn to important work and also probably checking something important off your list every single day. And when we think about the, the least likely or an unlikely pairing, this is the one that was a little bit of a surprise for me. Yeah. I'm not totally sure how to, um, how to validate this in my mind, but I'll give it a shot. (laughs) The least likely to show up with significance in someone's top five is developer. Now, developer takes delight in incremental growth at any level for every person. And I think that for that, there's not quite so much of a sorting with developer. There's an an all-inclusiveness with developer. You know, I don't care. I don't need everybody to be the best, but I want everybody to be on their on their own track to becoming a little bit better. That doesn't sound like significance. You know, significance is you know, I is is really comfortable being the star rather than the supporting cast. Uh, so you could have them both, and I think if you had them both, it would um, that developer would change the the course of where your significant aims, where your significance lies. You know, I see things about you know how could you think about lasting social justice issues, or how could you think about you know serving people and helping other people grow in a way that's going to last with them forever. It might be the teacher who helps people talk about um, not just what they learned in the class, but their entire purpose on the planet. Um, so it's it absolutely could show up. Um, it just doesn't happen to. Yeah. I think it paired together is incredibly powerful. I mean, they're all, they all have these really powerful elements, but when we think of significance and developer in the ways of taking that, that kind of that need for recognition and spotlight and thriving and fueling it's jet fuel, right? Recognition is jet fuel for, for those with significance. And then pairing that together with developer in a way that affects other people. I we always say the me versus the we in its mature state can just be an incredible, as we think about managers or we think about leaders, can be an incredible combo on a team to really think about people's uh, own personal and professional development, understanding what they need and how they need to be developed. Um, and then done sorted in a significant way. This is, I think, mm-hmm. where the, 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 you know, the real genius in it is is not just develop for developer's sake. You know, sometimes we get that we get that learner or we get that input where it's just massive input regardless of what it is, we're sucking it in. The significance, like a maximizer, is able to support is able to sort that kind of on a in a in a public sense. Like what's most important? Because let's be honest, we live our lives in public, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in a lot of cases. And there's a lot of jobs and a lot of responsibilities where public perception matters, whether we like it or not whether we agree with it or not, people's public perception of us matters. And someone with significance can be such a powerful tool in being able to know in the public, in the limelight, in the public perception, what are the really important things? Because there's only so many hours in a day, 
So what are the really important things, guys, we need to focus on? They're going to make maximum impact. In, the, in areas of nonprofit, this is really hard because there's so many good things people can do, right? And you can, you can the, the dog can be chasing his tail trying to figure out, trying to do all those things. And I think someone with significance can really sort that and say, guys, these are the most important things that, that'll have the maximum amount of impact to get the maximum amount of recognition because it's important, right? Yeah. You know, one thing that I, that I love about close friends of mine who have significance is they don't so much have that, that switch of when I'm being seen and when I'm not. Uh, and that leads to a real sincerity. Uh, you know, they don't really have a, gosh, well, I mentioned earlier, if you, if you tuned in earlier, you hear stories about what I look like when I'm not on camera. I mean, it is no makeup. It's, you know, I'm, I may or may not have showered. Uh, but, you know, when I'm, when I'm in front of people, I'm very put together. I think significance isn't like that. Significance is completely aware that everything you do is going to have an effect on other people. And, and to live in that place, I think, brings a lot of grace, brings a lot of polish. And, and that's, that's how you show that you care about others. So people with significance, I, I found that they don't like to, to be recognized flippantly. Again, they drive to relevance. So to bring, Jim, to bring it back to your idea about nonprofits, about, you know, somebody who could help you focus to, to what's most important, what they could do is, you know, focus to what do we really need to be recognized for? What kind of work do we need to be focusing on? What will make the biggest difference in other people's lives? They've got that filter to tell when the recognition is sincere and when it's meaningful. And the, it, and it, they're not excited about stuff that is insincere or that or that feels like it's it's not quite accurate it doesn't um it doesn't follow what they've been putting out into the world uh, and i think there's a real beauty about that ability to live in in more of a spotlight because um you know i had my very favorite aunt told me once when i first went to new york city i was about eight years old and i was really really cold it was, it was like a, a freak snowstorm hit and i didn't have the right clothes and so i threw on you know my my uncle's t-shirt and a couple other you know i looked incredibly disheveled just to stay warm and i was i was a little bit embarrassed and she pulled me aside and she said micah don't worry it's new york city nobody sees you until you're ready to be seen and i could live in that space and be pretty comfortable about it that's it's almost the opposite of significance. It's leaning into the fact that everybody sees you all the time. So what you do matters all the time. And that's a lot of pressure, but it's also a lot of beauty. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. I, I think, you know, we, we're here to love all these, all 34 of these themes and, and sometimes significance takes it on the chin. I think we've given some good, some good insight uh, to why it is. It's superpower. You know, so Don, Don Clifton had significance in his top five. And when I think about the summit, you know, we just opened up registration for the 2017 summit. And there's lots of things we could do at the summit. When you think about a two-day summit and, and all the things we're pulling together. And I think as a company, we, we employ that significance theme in a lot of people to say, what are the most important things to be done? We get a lot of feedback from a lot of folks, well, do this or do that. And that the team that plans that summit really uses that. We've got a couple people on there with significance. And I think you know, when we think of Don, he could have stayed in the academic world and made this a white paper that never really went anywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it could have just been a great idea. And I think his significance drove this. And there's that quote, you know, I think we said before where he said, what if a million people, a million, knew and understood their strengths? In the day, that was a big audacious goal, right? Of thinking mm -hmm. a million. We are really, really close as we record this here on September 29th. We're really close to 15 million. And Micah, that's picking up. So it's not yeah. slowing down. I mean, we're doing 2 million this year. We'll probably do 3 million next year. And so what a, what a great example of significance in his life to take it from the academic world and make it real to people and not just like, hey, this would be a great idea, but how, what if we really made this a product? And what if it was a big deal? And I think that's just a great example of significance. It Any is, other it's beautiful. Yeah, it's good isn't good enough. Um, it's, it's, you know, what if we had a million people? What if we could fly to the moon? What if we could carry computers around in our pockets? You know, significance ideas change the universe. 
And that's awesome. I mean, that's, and it's probably filtered through thinking, yeah, I'm going to be recognized or, or this is going to have an effect on others. And, and that's, I, I, I just love it. So a couple other final thoughts about significance. Um, it's, it's that craving for feedback because that feedback is evidence that you're being seen. So um, it's, if you have significance, think about how are you going to define and express the legacy that you want to leave. Um, if you're coaching somebody with significance, don't be afraid of those big questions. You know, the questions like, what do we want to be celebrating at your retirement party? Or, you know, what is the fingerprint that you're leaving here on the work that you're touching? What's the, what's the change you're drawn to making in the world? Um, that's going to fire people with significance up and, and really help them think about it. And once you've defined it for yourself, that'll help you sort even better to the types of work that you choose to do. I find that comfort being visible uh, translates very often as courage, and that can be courage that you can lend to others. Uh, find those places where you're most comfortable being visible. That's probably thinking about looking at the other themes that you've got there. You know, that's going to help you define the kind of values that, that come to the table for you, the types of things you want to be known for, um, and really hone in on that. And then think about how can I help other people um, really be, really have a little bit more of a microphone? How can I share the spotlight with other things that I see are significant? Um, and I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing about significance is they like people around them to be known and to be appreciated. Uh, and, and that's, again, the me versus we, that's certainly a part of it, but it really, I think it's a motivating factor and it brings us back to understanding significance as being an influencing theme. If you've got high significance, think about building your network of professionals who are credible because that will help you, again, specialize in the area where you're credible. Um, and you'll be drawn to you know, people who can help you um, understand the world a little bit better, people who are also making a splash in their own field. Um, I think that 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 term making a splash is something that people with significance are pretty great at and, and they don't shy away from. So think about specializing that splash that you make and, you know, what kind of words would you want people to use to describe how you made them feel and, and, the, and the, um, the mission or the legacy that you that you leave? I think for significance, your focused presence is the gift that you give to people. Um, it is not doing things on accident which means you're probably doing things with great care um, and great polish and great grace. And being present with people is, is such a gift that you can give them. It will leave, um, leave them with an opportunity to um, get to know you a little bit better, leave you with an opportunity to touch and understand the sort of feedback and that effect that you're having on other people. So it's, um, it's a fantastic theme. I, I just, I can't say enough good about it. Um, and if you're, one of the you know many people who who doubt that it's a strength upon that first time that you see it, think about you know bring yourself back to all of these all of these themes or strengths because somebody at some point used them in a way that made them incredibly successful and in many cases made other people incredibly successful. So start to think about what that poster child looks like. You know I like the Don Clifton poster child or the you know the big audacious goals that 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 maybe came from somebody who was brave enough to say there's some more important work we can be doing and here's where it should be. Yeah, I, I always think if, if if somebody starts a sentence with "Imagine if we could," and then you know fill that in, and I think uh, if you check their top five and they have significance, that may be one of those clues that hey, I might want to pay attention to what's happening here because this this may be a big deal. We're going to dive into the theme dynamics portion, Micah. Why don't you set that up while I set the camera up? So if you've been listening to this and you have significance, and we said anything that you were just like, "Wait, that's not me." It probably has something to do with the other themes you have. No one theme stands alone in a human. And as strengths coaches, we have to be able to mix and blend and appreciate the interplay of one theme with another. Theme dynamics allows us to do that. So what we're pulling up here are uh, a couple different themes. You voted on these on our Call to Coach Facebook page. You voted on which ones you wanted to talk about alongside significance. And what Jim's using is the ebook um, written by Kurt Liesfeld that'll help us do that. It's uh, expanding your strengths. And you, you get to use this drop down menu. It comes with an app along with the book once you purchase it. And then you can blend together all possible combinations of two themes at a time. So um, based on the most popular one um, on the Facebook page you wanted to hear go along with significance, it was Maximizer. Two influencing themes here. We've talked about both of these. Again, slight differences between them. Maximizer is a little bit more about uh, doing something, taking something from good to great. 
significance, I think, casts a wider net of the impact uh, that you're making in order to sort. Uh, when, when you think about them together, it sounds like this. Your efforts for excellence are intensified when your results are visible. An audience brings out your best. So you hear that comfort with an audience, that interplay with, with other people from significance. You hear the, the word best quite a few times. That's, that's really from Maximizer. But that desire to have Maximizer grow feet and go out into the audience and, and have some feedback, I think that's what significance, how significance intensifies Maximizer. I get, Mike, I get asked all the time, do I have significance? Because it's one of those things where I like, you know, I talk about these big goals and we're going to do stuff. And I, and I love being in the limelight. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's why I do the things that I do. And I don't. It's, it's actually, it's, it's a ways down. But this Maximizer Woo theme can kind of, yeah. you know, that, the combo of those two can look a lot like significance. And so it's interesting as we've been going through this. I have been thinking a lot, it's, it was John was saying things in season one of you've been saying things today. I'm like, wow, that sounds a lot like me. And, and yet it's my woo significance that, that really, pl I'm sorry, woo maximizer that kind of, kind of mimics it in some ways. Yeah. You know, I, I think that for myself as well, I have woo and maximizer. I also have positivity as I know you do. And I think that positivity woo combination that really equals attuned into are you stimulating others um, and are they liking you for it um, plus maximizer are you doing the right thing are you doing the best thing could you do even better could you you know push the bar even further um, I think that that can look a lot like significance where it's different is what woo and maximizer will probably do is aim a little bit more for the personal skin in the game uh, you know, I'm looking, and I can speak for myself here, I want you to like me. And if throwing out a goal that's a little bit too big drives you crazy and, and throws you off and means you're not going to like me, well, it's not that important to me. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really do look for how do we, how do we move forward in the, in the best way possible. I think significance doesn't have that same hesitance. You know, if, if what we're doing doesn't allow us to move forward quickly or if what we're doing is going to make people mad or if we're, what we're doing is going to temporarily affect the, uh, the way that other people feel, significance tends to, I think, have a little bit more of a long-term skin in the game. That's where you're looking for the, the relevant recognition, that recognition at the very end of something or the next piece of, of recognition. It's not just, did I like you? With significance is, I admire what you did. I admire um, the work that you created or, you know, you were brave enough to go out there and stretch boundaries and make people a little bit uncomfortable so that you could eventually get that feedback back. It's almost like there's a little bit more patience with significance maybe than there is with woo. Here now we're talking about a different theme, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought that for myself as well. I don't have it. It's significance is number 19 for me. And living with somebody who does have significance, you know, he's drawn to things and he cares about things that I just don't think are that important. <laughs> and I think yeah. it's, it's probably just different ways that you sort. Drawn to the light is kind of what I like to like a, drawn like to a the moth, like a, <laughs> to moth the flame. Hot, <laughs> like a moth on a hot summer night. Okay. Let's, uh, let's look at it. And by the way, great conversation when we think about just the conversation you and I had is a great conversation to have if you're a coach with your coachee. As you're mm -hmm. working through these, let them work these things out as they're talking about them. You give little clues, but let them talk about it. And that's just- It's a easy. Yeah, it's easy to look at this and think, gosh, I'm never going to know all those nuances. I'm never going to know how all these themes play together. And you don't have to. You, your coach, ne your coachee needs the space to figure it out for themselves. We've got um, this Expanding Your Strengths Guide every theme Thursday. You can certainly get better and you should get better at knowing these themes, but you are never going to know as much about somebody else's themes as they do. So be patient and ask great questions and give them the space to sort it out for themselves. Right on. Let's look at Achiever now. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, so we'll, we'll blaze through this one, but significance and Achiever. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like this. You are driven by the fire in your belly to get things done and by the fans in the stands who are cheering you on. So Achiever is that internal drive and I think significance is the external sorting. So it's, it's that great combination there. Great stuff. It's significance and command. Yeah, presence all around. Really what this says to me is it's it's presence. People are drawn to you. People want to listen to you, but you also want to listen to them and make sure that you're driving them in the right place. Um, when you, Two influencing themes. When you put them together, it sounds like this. You can take charge and make tough decisions. When you do, you want the value of your personal stock to go up, not down. 
So it's that ability, you know, command without significance. Um, you might not have that second sentence of, you know, you want your value to go up by, by making those tough decisions. But, uh, but significance, I think, stretches command in that beautiful way to say, you know what, let's pay attention to how this is, you know, how this is affecting the people around us. Funny how these influencing themes kind of grouped up this week. Let's talk about significance and self-assurance. I'm just guessing. I'm going to think they grouped up because they're hard sometimes to tell the difference you know, mm-hmm. between them, especially when you're, you're not seeing somebody's top five, you're just seeing their behavior. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint you know, which one's which. So that would be my guess on why we're doing these, but um, they're all super powerful. Significance and self-assurance together, beautiful, awesome combination. Um, so I think about, there's a calmness to self-assurance. It comes from your gut. Um, we're going to talk about self-assurance uh, next week, right? Uh, uh, or two I weeks. I think it's at the very end. Yeah, we had uh, to move At the it. very end. Eventually, very we're going to talk about three, self-assurance. Three and it is about having that internal compass. It's it's not just about being brave. It's about seeing yourself as a key player in the situation versus maybe, say, input, where you would make a decision using information as a key player. Self-assurance uses yourself as, as part of the answer. And when you put that with significance, I think it just adds to the boldness and the courage to stretch beyond what people would expect um, and to realize that your words have a lot of weight and, and to live in, in that way. So it sounds like this when you put them together. How you feel about yourself is shaped by the external evaluations of others and by your internal self-evaluation. It's like this awesome awareness of your influence and, and your effect. Very cool. Let's do the last one in this series here, and we'll do significance and competition. Another influence. Back to thing. these influencing themes. Yeah, competition, uh, similarly to, to significance, competition is about external awareness. So competition is about benchmarking. Um, I think competition has a little bit more of a, I want to win, whereas significance is, I want to win the approval um, or the admiration uh, of others. It sounds like this when you put them together. You enjoy being the first to cross the finish line and being the center of attention when you get your gold medal. You can imagine loving either of those separately, but loving them together, that, that's the beauty of putting significance and competition together. Yeah, I think of a guy like Michael Phelps when I, when I see these two together, right? He absolutely has a drive to compete and to win. Yeah. And yet, uh, he, I, I, you know, that, that and it, or again, we're guessing, and I hate doing that, but it's, it is a good example, a good modern example when we think about that. And uh, being the center uh, certainly is, he struggled with that early on. You know, that's one of those things not everybody, so maybe he didn't have the significance maybe he wasn't part. wasn't prepared, who knows? Yeah, you know, I wasn't my, prepared for that. My husband has both of these in his top five. Um, He's one of those people who, who really didn't like seeing significance, didn't like how it sounded, didn't want to tell anybody that, that he had it. Um, he's okay with it now, which is why I can tell all of you. But, uh, you know, for him, both of these play out as um, that competition makes it ultra important that what he's doing is leading to a measurable outcome. So, you know, he, he doesn't like to spend time on things that feel like they're policy for the sake of policy. Um, and he does like to make sure that there's always some sort of benchmark that allows him to, to compare his success to, to the success of others. Um, I think it drives him to go a lot further um, than me and than other people uh, because it's that uh, there's some jet fuel in competition. But it, uh, he would not be the person who necessarily wanted the spotlight on him unless it was for something that was important and impactful and was going to have that lasting legacy to it. So it, it's it's a it's a beautiful combination that I happen to have a big crush on. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally that you have a crush on. So that's yeah. pretty cool. In uh, two weeks, we're going to take one more week off. And then we have three straight weeks, finally, at the end of the year here to kind of wrap up season two. And then we'll do a season wrap. So we've got four more of these webcasts coming. Uh, when we think about strategic, uh, when we put those two together, first talk a little bit about strategic. And then what does this look like when yeah. they're paired? Strategic also a misunderstood theme because of the name, uh, much like significance or empathy. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time talking to people about strategic, either if they have it high or if they have it low, because it's a, it's a word we like in our language and, and in our, our lexicon. It's, it's a word that carries a lot of weight. What strategic means in Clifton Strengths world is anticipating uh, the next pattern 
picking up on patterns, and anticipating the next move. So uh, people with high strategic tend to see the world from a 30,000 foot view or see specific problems from a 30,000 foot view. They're always thinking about what am I going to do right now and, and what am I going to do next? So uh, people with high strategic often are very good at coming up with the plan almost so quickly that they can't even describe the steps to you, but they know exactly where are we going to go from here? How are we going to maneuver through the situation next? Um, it is a strategic thinking theme. So it's not about how do we check the boxes. Um, it's more about what are the cons the concepts that all need to flow and, and, and the order that they need to flow in. When you put that together with significance, to me, it just sounds like uh, we're going to follow the most important plan. We're going to follow the plan that, that has the biggest legacy. Here's how how we're going to make it to the moon, or here's how we're going to have a million people, you know, take StrengthsFinder. Um, if you listen to Kurt's words, it sounds like this. Your keen awareness of the perceptions of others helps you find options that are politically correct. So again, strategic is about patterns and options, not just having a plan B, but having a plan C, D, E, F, G. Uh, and so it's that ability to evaluate options based on patterns and then pick the best one really quickly. Pretty cool. Did you go through, I'm sorry, I was paying attention to the chat room. Did you go through the definition? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So we're pretty excited um, to talk about strategic. If you have ideas around strategic and you want to get them in before we have the theme Thursday, please, please send it to us. You know, we love hearing what it looks like for you. We're really excited about um, thinking ahead to speaking of st strategic and thinking ahead. We're thinking ahead to season three um, and, and we're really looking forward to that. This has just been so far a, a wonderful exercise in really intentionally studying every single theme from the standpoint of understanding what's, what's beautiful and brilliant and, and impactful about it and really helping you fall in love with it. So I hope this helped you fall in love with significance today. Yeah, very good. I, and, and just a reminder, we'll take a, another week break next week. I can't remember, why are, why are we not meeting next week? It's a I six, was it you or was it <laughs> <laughs> I think I, it, I don't know. I let's let's confirm that we are definitely taking. No, a, I think we are break. definitely. I think we have next week off. If you're listening to this in a time shifted manner, you don't really care because you're just going to yeah, listen to the matter. next one. But if you head over to the coach's blog and uh, you go to so if you go to coaching.gallup.com and you click on the GWSW tab, it has all the dates there that are available for you. So we are we are off next week. The sixth, right? Or, yeah, that is the sixth. And then we are off. And then we do strategic on the yep, third. Strategic woo and self assurance. We got a little out of order, and that's probably driving it. But few only slightly. Crazy. Only one of them's missing. See that strategic. See it from the 30,000 foot view. You'll realize only one of them's wrong. <laughs> we, will, we will wrap it up with self assurance uh, when we get done. And like I said, Mike and I will do a season wrap uh, here towards the middle of November and uh, wrap up season two with some thoughts about the season and what we learned and and we'll kind of preview a little bit uh, for you what season three is going to look like. So you might want to watch it. Oh, we're thinking about that already. Actually, we've been thinking about that since May. And uh, so we got some great stuff coming ahead for you. Micah, Micah any final thoughts on, uh, on significance? Yeah. Um, so I've got a couple quotes on significance. I couldn't decide which one to go with, but I I don't have significance, but I have had this picture in my office since I was about eight years old. I had an office when I was eight. Not, no, no, not a joke there. Um, and I love it. It's a quote um, and it's illustrated and it's from Emerson. It says, make the most of yourself for that's all there is of you. I think that it, it sort of talks about the importance of doing lasting work, the legacy. Um, significance does that by um, picking up on, on the sort of uh, approval or impact that you're having on other people. But it really is at the end of the day about squeezing every drop out of life, really doing it on purpose and living out loud. Yeah, and, and, and it being important. And I think that's one of those very, very powerful things. Uh, kind of something I missed uh, in my younger days when I would just do. And, uh, and, and now really think, you know, as you get a little bit older, you start kind of thinking about what if you're going to leave a legacy, what are you going to do? And I think significance is an important sorter in being able to understand that. So some good stuff. Well, Micah, thanks again for jumping in here. And we'll look forward to kind of wrapping up the season as we kind of get towards the end here. I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. GallupStrengthCenter.com. Send us your questions, comments. If you'd like to be a guest blogger on our on our coach's site, we are accepting uh, your submissions for that. We're not to able to take them all. You know, four to 600 words or so around uh, around a theme or something you have to say around strength, send those to us, coaching at gallup.com. Those will actually go right to Micah. So just make sure you put guest blogger in the email 
and uh, we will those will go to Micah and and uh, she'll review them. So if you want to know how to do that, get that done there. While you're out at the coaches blog, if you go to coaching.gallup.com, you can get the links to well go to the resources tab, and there's just tons of resources available for you. Our Facebook group, YouTube page, iTunes RSS feeds, how to subscribe, the iPhone, the iPhone app. By the way, just just a quick little thing on our app. We did recently refresh the app. Uh, and it's available. We had a few problems in the refresh. It's an older app, and the guys uh, just had a few problems with it. Most of those issues have been fixed, especially the login issues. So just delete the app and reinstall it. That fixes it in almost all cases. Um, there are some instructions on how to report a bug uh, inside the app there if you're if you're having those issues. But we, I do recognize there were some folks who are having some problems. We kind of knew about it, and we've been we've been working on those apps to get them fixed. So if you want to just uninstall it for both iPhone and Android, just uninstall the old version, reinstall the new version, and that should fix the login issue there for you. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, you can get a complete list of all our courses that lead to certification. They're available at courses.gallup.com. I would say we've also announced, and you're getting an early announcement. We haven't really even put this out in the public. We've been doing it on Facebook and some of our social sites and here in the webcasts, but officially Summit 2016 or 2017 is open, Micah. Available for registration. Yeah, September 29th. Actually, it was yesterday when it became available, so it's brand new. If you want to take a peek, CliftonStrengthSummit.com gets you there in all the 2017 pricing. Everything's available for you when you need to come, all that other stuff. If you need to budget for it, plenty of time to get it done. Early bird pricing is in effect until the end of October. So if you can make that decision early, you can save yourself some money in coming. Uh, and uh, so some great stuff. We're excited about the conference. It's going to be great this year. There's going to be some very significant uh, stuff that we do this year during the conference, none of which I know. I'm just throwing that out because I know it's going to be that way. If you found this helpful, we'd ask that you share it. We'll thank everyone for coming. And with that, uh, we will say, and to you, we will say, I have no idea where my window is. There it is. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>